If you got something to praise Him for, why don't you lift your voice right now? If you've been washed in the blood of Jesus, just give Him a little glory. Hey! Come on, no limits. Let's get the devil under our feet. Let's put on the whole armor of God. My, 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 my. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jesus is here right now. Jesus is here right now. Well, well, well. Come on, I know you feel it. I know you feel a quickening. I know you feel life. My, 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 my. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many like what you feel? Amen. Amen. I don't believe that the devil runs from anemic church. I believe the devil is happy when we barely get by from Sunday to Sunday and just about ready to throw in the towel but I believe just as strongly that the devil is afraid of an anointed apostolic tongue talking oneness hey we know who Jesus is And the devil's afraid. And your Bible says they tremble at that kind of an atmosphere. How about we just run him out tonight? Can we do that? Can we just look at the devil and say, you're not going to get victory over us tonight. We've got your number. In the name of Jesus. Somebody speak that name right now. Somebody speak that name right now. Hallelujah. Ooh, it's time for the apostolic church to rise up in the Holy Ghost. To rise up in the anointing. To rise up in your heavenly calling. Woo! Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. It's No Limits 2018, and I feel all right. Amen. Look at your neighbors say, I'm glad I came to No Limits 2018. Mm. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. You can find... You can find a seat. I don't know how long I'm going to preach tonight. You never know what's going to happen on a Friday night. It is an honor to be with you and to, to stand in this pulpit. We have loved No Limits for many years. And my wife and I made up in our mind that there's a few places we're going to do everything in our power to be at every year and no limits is one of those places and pastor and sister young do such an amazing job aren't you thankful for the man of god and and his precious wife and their family we love you brother young and appreciate you so much and bishop and sister wilson and this family we love them and we honor them. The, the Wilsons and the Youngs and the Salters, uh, they were very instrumental in my wife, 
myself, my boys in our life at a very, very dark time in our life. And I'm finding out that that's a common theme, Bishop Wilson. You've, you've run in on a, on a white horse in a lot of people's lives. Amen. And, and we thank you for your counsel and we thank you for the wisdom that you've helped us so much with. Amen. And so there's a loyalty there and there is a love there. And we thank our great God for what he's put together in this last day. You're part of a dynamic church. You're part of an apostolic church that's taking territory. Amen. Amen. This is the best time to live for God right now. I don't want to live in the days of Abraham. I don't want to live in the days of David. Amen. Abraham rejoiced to see the day of Jesus Christ. And he was glad. You're living in the greatest day this world has ever seen. Amen. And it's a good time to be apostolic. Amen. Amen. Others of you that are here that are part of the No Limits family, we love you. We appreciate you. And this great rock church. Amen. Why don't you stand with me tonight? What a, what a time we've had over these last several days. Um, beginning with Brother Carpenter. Thank you, Brother Carpenter, for obeying the Holy Ghost. Amen. We love and appreciate you and have enjoyed so much getting to know you and your precious family. And, and the other speakers. My, we've heard preaching this week. I believe in preaching. I believe we're saved by preaching. Amen. Music can thrill you, but preaching will save you. And for those of you that are in South Haven, Mississippi, back home, listen on Holy Ghost Radio, I love you. Appreciate you so much. It's a, our home and our boys, Joseph and Benjamin, are there. I'm glad my wife, Jackie Urshan, can be with me here. I love her very much. Amen. And it's a good time to be apostolic. I'm reading tonight from Genesis chapter 48 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 48 and verse 1. While you're turning there, I enjoyed... Brother Stephen Jones and Brother Ken Bo this morning. Amen. They were mightily used by the Holy Ghost. Genesis chapter 48 and verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And I believe that if we are going to make an impact in our world, we are going to have to walk in the full-orbed dominion of the spirit world. We're not going to win these battles by flesh. We're not going to win these battles by our cunning. We're not going to think our way into the future because there's stuff coming down the pike that is going to blow our minds. But as much as hell is going to throw at us, our God is that much greater. Amen. I need some people that believe that here tonight. How many believe that your God? In the name of Jesus. And so tonight I want to try to convey an idea 
that God laid on my heart. I hope I can do it justice. I want to preach to you a message I'm entitling, Jacob is weak, but Israel is strong. Jacob is weak, but Israel is strong. Look at the first person standing next to you and tell him, we got to walk in the spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I am so glad to be part of God's church. There is no place I would rather be than in the church of the living God. If you're in the church, you're in a good place. We're not going down, we're going up. We're not falling apart, we're coming together. We're not growing older, we're growing younger. Amen. You are in the what the Bible calls the innumerable company of angels. The general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Amen. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Welcome to the church. I'm not talking about the church that the Pope built. I'm not talking about the church that John Wesley built. I'm not talking about the church that Martin Luther built. I'm not talking about the church that Joseph Smith built. I'm not talking about the church that Charles Taz Russell built. I'm talking about the church that Jesus built. Hey, hey, he said upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. It's a blood washed church. It's a Jesus name church. It's a holiness church. Yes, I'm talking about the church. Man, you got to stop that. I'll do this all night. <laughs> Praise God. You give me a B3 in the church, man, and we'll have us a Holy Ghost time. Our world doesn't need dead church. Our do world doesn't need quiet church. Our world doesn't need sophisticated church. It needs chain breaking, devil chasing, uh, Holy Ghost. Uh, <laughs> It needs a church that's on fire. It needs a church that's dripping with the anointing. It needs a church that's looking hell in the eyes and saying, we're not going anywhere. But I'm pulling people out of the fire. Hating the garment spotted by the flesh. It's the church. Amen. I love God's church. I know that there's mistakes. I know that there's hypocrites. I know that there's failures. But I still love His church. I know there's been problems. I know there's been difficulties. I know there's been rough patches, but I still love the church. It was in the church that you found salvation. 
It was in the church that you got baptized. It was in the church that you had your name written in the Lamb's book of life. It was in the church, in the church, in the church, in the church. It's going to be in the church that you make it to heaven. It's going to be in the church that you're going to wash your garments and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. It's going to be in the church. Come on, let's be the church. Let's be the book of Acts administration that casts down imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself again, itself against the knowledge of God. Old song says it's been through the fire and the fire couldn't burn it. It's been through the flood and the flood couldn't turn it. It's the church. It's triumphant. And it's built by the hand of the Lord. Are you glad you're in the church tonight? Are you glad you're Jesus' name tonight? Come on, don't patty cake with the devil. Don't play around with compromise. Are you glad you know that he's the Father, he's the Son, and he's the Holy Ghost? And all these three are one. Hey, glory to God. Mm. Man, I haven't even got started yet. I'm just enjoying being in the church. The devil's scared of a mobilized church. The, the devil is scared of an apostolic church. He's not afraid of denomination. He's not afraid of religion. He's not afraid of stained glass windows. He's not afraid of holy water. But he is definitely afraid of the church. He knows that if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, that God will hear from heaven. It's the church. It's the church that Jesus started. Amen. You can be seated. One came, one came to Joseph and said, said that Jacob is sick. Jacob is sick. The patriarch, the man, the one who has brought us to this point is sick. It is possible that God's people can be sick. It is possible for the church to get to a point to where it's not functioning in optimum fashion. Our world has seen enough hypocrites. They are begging, they are pleading for someone to be what they say they are. They are desperate. For someone to be on Monday what they say they are on Sunday. Our world doesn't need a sick church. It needs a live church. It doesn't need a church that limps. 
or a church that hobbles or a church that cringes or a church that is intimidated or beaten down or ashamed of I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to Man, when this thing works the way it's designed to work, there is no force in hell that can stand against the church. But one came and said, they're sick. We've seen, if you're not careful, you can... You can operate at less than full capacity as the church. We've heard preaching this week that has touched on this subject, touched on this topic. But if there's ever been a time where we need to be what, what the essential church is in Scripture, that time is right now. It's not time to backslide. It's not time to cruise the internet for six hours a day and wonder why we have mediocre services and anemic prayer lives and lust that rips apart young men and young ladies come on we need clear-eyed young men and young ladies that that purpose in their heart that they're not going to defile themselves with babylon's table Strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. But you live in the same world that I live in. And it is a reality that we have to confront. We have to guard against. It is possible for God's people to be sick. It is possible. And I don't just mean sick in a corrupt sense. But, but I, sometimes it's heart sick. There are people in this room right now that you have come to no limits and you are sick with failed expectations. There's home missionaries in this room right now. The devil has told you you are never going to have revival. That you're never going to make it. That you're always going to be the tail and you're never going to be the head. There are pastor's wives that are miserable and they are wondering if this is what living for God is all about. Then I'm at my wit's end. And they're holding up the hands of men who are struggling and they're trying to keep their children together. And that's one of the reasons why you're here at No Limits. And hell is throwing everything in its arsenal at people. And they have come sick and weary and hurting to No Limits 2018. And I came to preach to you tonight that the devil is a liar. You listen to me, home missionary wife. The devil is a liar. God has great things in store for his church. Listen to me, missionary. God is going to show up and he's going to show out in the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to go home stronger than what you came. You're going to go home with a word from God. You're going to go home ready to tackle hell with a bucket of water. Because you're part of a glorious church. It's a fearful thing when God's people are sick. Amen. I've, I've seen, I've seen it. The, the, the idea that is presented here in, in the scripture is that it can be one man with two administrations. Jacob doesn't have the power, but Israel does. The idea is that that there is a, a fallen nature that will never have dominion. But there is a heavenly nature that is well able. You can look in the mirror and see the same face looking back at you. 
Amen. And, and it depends on whether or not you've been in a prayer room as to whether you're looking at Jacob or whether you're looking at Israel. Are you going to walk in fallenness? Are you going to walk in defeat? Are you going to walk in despair? Or are you going to hear the word of the Lord and say, wait a minute. My God is great and he's greatly to be praised. You've got to let Israel grab the reins of your life. Amen. To get a grip on that, you have to understand the prophecy that was given. Uh, the Bible describes it. Rebecca is with child. And she's going to have babies. She's going to have twins. And as she struggles, and she is struggling, she has become pregnant. God has blessed her. He has blessed her with with conception, a barren womb that that was looked so hopeless and so unable and so lost, God reached down from heaven and touched her and blessed her. And in that blessing, the Bible says that the two babes that were inside of her were at war with one another. Amen. Anybody that comes into this apostolic lifestyle will have a struggle on the inside. There's going to be a fight on the inside. There's going to be two nations at war on the inside. Amen. And, and, and the, the, the idea is that there is going to be flesh and there is going to be spirit. One is going to pull one way, and the other is going to pull another way. One is going to pull towards the things of God, and one is going to pull towards the things of the world. And though you are blessed, you are faced with the challenge of, of gaining dominion and gaining victory on the inside. And she looks around and she said, I thought this was going to be a blessing. I thought this was going to be a, a wonderful thing. I wanted so badly to be with child, but something's going on on the inside of me. Can any test, anybody testify to how it felt when you realized that you had to, you had to either walk in the spirit or walk in the flesh? Amen. You found out that going to church meant that there was going to be a war on the inside of you. Amen. There's going to be one side of you that is tugged towards the world. And another side of you that is going to pull towards the things of God. If we are going to have revival, No Limits 2018, we're going to have to walk in the Spirit. We're going to have to grab a hold of ourselves and say, I know the struggle is real, but I am going to find the prayer room. I am going to find the mind of God. We've got to have young preachers that are going to say, I'm not going to get lost in Hollywood, but I'm going to get lost in his word. I'm not going to get lost in the entertainment world, but I'm going to get lost in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so when she asked the question, what's going on on the inside? The answer came back, there are two nations at war inside of you. And one is stronger than the other. And, and God loves one of them. And he hates the other. Jacob have I loved. But Esau have I hated. There's the idea that the firstborn... Is, is going to be one that does not have God's favor. And the second born is the one that God is going to choose. What is it about the first born that causes heaven to, to look on with disapproval? There's something about Esau, the first born, that is strong. He's powerful. He, he knows what he wants. 
He is a man of the field. Esau doesn't need God. Esau's strength is his liability. Esau's ability is his weakness when it comes to the things of God. I want to tell somebody, I want you to be strong, but I don't want you to ever forget where your strength comes from. I hope you get education, but don't you ever get so educated that you can't speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. I hope you make a million dollars, but I hope you never get so rich that you can't run the aisles and worship and dance before God. I hope you live in a nice house, but I hope it never silences your praise and mutes your worship because your strength can never take precedence over the presence of God. And there's something about that firstborn nature that God says, I hate it. And there's something about the secondborn that says, I want what God has in store for me no matter the cost. There will be a second born that comes along. Every apostolic in this room has to come to grips with this reality. Your first born is your natural birthday. It's your Esau. It's your physical man. It is strong. It is self-willed. If you give the firstborn control, it will destroy your marriage. It will take your children towards the world. The firstborn will lose out with God. The firstborn will sell out eternity for the temporary satisfaction of a bowl of soup. The firstborn says, what good will the birthright do me if I die? What good will it do me if I die? It's a question that Esau asked within himself. And there's actually an answer to that. A lot. It'll write your name in the Lamb's book of life. It'll give you the stars of heaven. It'll give you the sand by the seashore. It'll save you. It'll deliver you. It'll pull you out of hell. It'll solidify your marriage. I've got a birthright that I'll do anything to keep a hold of. I came to No Limits 2018 because I'm going to grab a hold of the birthright. I came looking for a word from God. I came expecting an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And the flesh may not want it, but the Spirit does. And this idea of the old nature and the new nature, the firstborn and the secondborn, you're going to see it repeated over and over and over and over again. Amen. You're going to see it in Cain and Abel, where, where the older grows jealous at the sacrifice of the younger. I didn't come to bring the wrong sacrifice tonight. I came to bring a sacrifice according to the word of the Lord. Can we have a little apostolic church tonight? There's some canes. There's some canes that would look at what you're doing and say, you lost your mind. That doesn't work in 2018. You got to sit down. Surely you need some fog machines. Surely you need, you need some kind of a prop. Surely you need to tone it down a little bit. But there's an able that rises up that says, oh no, there's a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And I didn't come to turn it down. I came to turn it up. I came.
came to have Holy Ghost Church. I came to dance in the Spirit. I came to walk in the Holy Ghost. This is the kind of church that will pull the drug addict out of their addiction. That will pull the prostitute off the street. That will save the pimp that was putting her there in the first place. You got to have the worship of the second born if you're going to have heaven to respect it. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm not on a little shot. We're never going to get there with the firstborn. We're never going to get there with the old man. We're never going to get there with Jacob. It's got to be Israel. It's got to be the one that wrestled with the angel and found power with God. Hallelujah. You'll see it with Isaac and Ishmael. You'll find out that the firstborn will mock what we're doing here. There'll be a spirit of mockery that comes along that says, you can't, you can't have this power. You can't have dominion. That spirit will look down its nose. At, look at every single time there was an outpouring of God's grace. And there was a demonstration of the supernatural and of the spirit. And you'll always find a spirit of mockery there. To try to shut it up. You'll find an Ishmael older brother spirit. Standing there saying you can't do that. That doesn't work. There, 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 there's, there's some fleshly carnal people that would look down on what we're doing in this building right now. And, 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 and they'll look down their nose at you and say, oh, you go to that church. You're one of those people. And, and they, 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 they... Ishmael looks at Isaac and mocks him. Ishmael looks at the second born and says, I'm taking dominion. I'm taking over. You're going to shut that praise down. You're going to shut that covenant down. I'm going to take over. I'm going to take over. And if you let Ishmael have his way, he will shut down the supernatural work of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We see that same spirit. We see that same spirit when, when a woman breaks open the door with, with uh, an alabaster box. And she comes to anoint the feet of Jesus. And as she anoints his feet and she breaks the alabaster box, there is the voice that says, to what purpose is this great waste? There is the voice that says, do you have any kind of an idea what kind of a woman this is? There is that voice that says, you can't praise God that way. You must have lost your mind. But there has to be another voice that rises up that says, I know exactly what kind of a woman that is. That's the reason why she's praising. Simon, since I came into your house, you never anointed my feet. You never anointed my head. You never got down and blessed me. But this little girl right here, you need to be careful when you make fun of people's worship and people's praise. You don't know where I was when he found me. You don't know what I was doing. You don't know what I was smoking. You don't know what I was... But 
there was a man named Jesus uh, who walked down into the muck and down into the mire and he picked me up. The question, Mr. Simon, is not why am I down here? The question, Mr. Simon, is why aren't you down here with me? What's wrong with you that you can't shout? What's wrong with you that you can't dance? What's wrong with you that you can't get excited? Come on, I need an alabaster box praise to break out right now. Anybody been there? Anybody been brought out? Anybody been set free? I haven't lost my mind. I found it. You'll see that same voice. You'll see that same voice when Jesus comes riding into Jerusalem and they take the palm branches and they start saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And here comes the voice of the older brother that says, don't you hear what they're saying? Don't you hear what they're doing? You need to tell them to be quiet. When that voice comes to you to tell you to be quiet, you need to look back at that voice and say, Honey, I ain't even got started yet. If you think that was something, watch me now. Watch me now. Blessed is he who cometh in the name, in the name, in the... Somebody grab a palm branch. Somebody lay your garment down and give him a little praise on a Friday night. Move of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praise God. Is there anybody here that can testify to what God? Man, I, I just feel the Holy Ghost. Man, I feel like something's about to break out in this house right now. My, 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 my. Hey! You'll see it, that voice, as David comes walking with the Ark of the Covenant. And he took six paces and he danced before the Lord with all of his might. And you can choose if you're going to be Jacob or Israel. You can choose whether you're going to be the old nature or the new nature. In that, in that particular set of circumstances, it was Saul's daughter who looked down out of her ivory tower. And she looked upon David leaping and praising God. And she despised him. And the voice of the old nature began to mock and to make fun of the things of God. You've got a decision to make apostolic in the year 2018. Are you going to be the daughter-in-law of Saul? Or are you going to be the wife of David?
Are you going to be a backslider's daughter? Or are you going to be a king's wife? You can be either one. You can be Jacob, or you can be Israel. You can be the old man, or you can be the new man. You can do what works, or you can do what doesn't work. And Michael looked down on him and despised him as he danced before the Lord. What in the world are you thinking, praising God like that? Have you lost your mind? And David looked back up at her and he said, I got news for you. It was before the Lord. I didn't do this for you. I didn't do this for your backslip. You don't know what God's done for me. You don't know what God... Where were you when the lion roared against me? Where were you when the bear grabbed the lamb? Where were you when Goliath shouted? Where were you on the cold Galilean nights? Where were you when your backslidden dad was trying to kill me? If you think that after God's delivered me that I'm going to be quiet, honey, you ain't seen nothing yet. If you thought I shouted before, watch me now. If you thought I danced before, watch me now. If you thought I... I wish somebody would get radical in the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, Israel. Get up. Come on, Israel. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Come on, man of God. Come on, woman of God. Right now, I want somebody to lift your hands all over this building. Right now, I want you to lift your voice and I want you to begin to cry out to him on a Friday night. Come on, Israel. Jacob's sick, but Israel is alive. Jacob can't, but Israel can. Come on, pastor. Come on, missionary. Come on, no limits. Give God and Israel praise. Give God a... Yeah, yes! Go ahead. Let it go. Go ahead. Let it go. Come on, praise him with an anointing. Praise him with a shout. Praise him with the timbrel. Praise him with the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments. Praise him with organs. Praise him. Come on, Israel. Come on. Sit up. Get up. Get up. The Holy Ghost walk in dominion, walk in power. You feel that? There's something breaking out. There's something breaking out. Hey, Shata, go ahead. Be apostolic. Be apostolic.
I know you're tired, Jacob, but let Israel rise up. I know you're worn out, pastor's wife, but let Israel rise up. I know you don't know what you're going to do, but it's time to let Israel sit up. Jacob carries the weight. Jacob carries the weight of Reuben's failure. He carries the weight of lies that his boys have told me, have told him. He carries the weight of all the failures and the famine and the worry and the concern. I know that there's bad things that happen in the church and I know that the church can get pretty beat up. But we're not going to do this thing as Jacob. We're going to do this thing as Israel. I came to remind somebody of who you are. I came to remind No Limits 2018 of who you are. The Bible says that the righteous shall flourish, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The devil has plans for you. Your enemy has plans for you. Jacob labors under the expectation of Laban. He labors under the lies that have been told to him. He's weary and he's about to give up and he's about to fall apart. But somebody came to Jacob and said, Joseph's here. You're not going to die. You're going to live. Your boy is here. Your promise is here. You're not going down. You're going up. In the name of Jesus. There's a false narrative that hell has put out towards the apostolic church that says that you're not going to make it. That, that, that you're falling apart. That nobody cares about you. That you're behind the times. That, 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 that there's no, even, no reason to even try to praise God. I came to tell you that Jesus is here. I came, I came to remind you of why you started preaching in the first place. God gave you dominion. God gave you power. God gave you a promise. God gave you your city. God gave you... God put you in your church. God put you in that foreign field. God put you, God put you, God put you there. So get up. Get up. Get up off of your bed. Get up out of your discouragement. Get up out of your defeat. Come on, Israel. Come on, Israel. You got to get up. Brother Caleb Adams, come on up here. Brother Phil Enders, come on up here. Hallelujah. Pastor Young, come on. Come on up here, Brother Randy Williams, Brother Joel Buxton. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Men of God, friends of mine. Amen. Other young pastors, I want you to come on. I want you to step out from where you are. If the devil's lied to you, come on up next to me, guys. Come right up next to me. Amen. We're going to lay hands on these people. We're going to believe God. The, the devil has lied. The devil has said that, that we're not going to make it. That he has told us that, that we're just a bunch of old conservative men that don't know what we're doing. And that we're going to fall apart. And, 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 and that, re, that, that we don't understand revival. Just give us a little time and, 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 and you're not going to make it. There's, there's an expectation of the wicked that they have plans for us. But the desire of the righteous is going to flourish. I came to tell you, God's doing big things. Listen to me. God's doing big things. Brother Bass, come on. Come up here. 
Others of you. Amen. Some of these missionaries. Brother Allard, come on. Amen. Men of God. Evangelists, come on. Brother Haddon, come on. Come over here with us. Look at him. Look at him. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. In the last... In the last year or two, these men have been blessed. Some of them have been handed a million dollars. Some of them have sold their churches and have made such a profit that it has propelled them into unprecedented revival. Brother Stephen Jones, where you at? Come on up. The devil told you that Roatan wasn't going to make it. He told you that you're not going to finish that building. I came to tell you the devil's a liar. We are going to make it. We're just getting started. We've got a praise. We've got an apostolic identity. We know who our God is. We're not backing up. We're not going home. We're not compromising. But we've got revival. We've got the name of Jesus. We've got the church. Now, it's the last night of No Limits 2018, and we're going to have a time in the Holy Ghost. Here's what we're going to do. First of all, I want you to stretch your hand up here to these great men of God. I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray for us that we hold this line. Uh, these elders, come on, Brother Carpenter. These, Come on. Come on, Brother, Brother Walker. Come on. Bradley. Bradley Smith. Come on. Come up here. I want you to stretch your hands to men of God, and I want you to pray. God's unleashing unprecedented revival right now in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hand out. Stretch your hand out. Stretch your hand out to the next generation. Come on. Come on. I know you're tired, but come on. I know the devil's coming against you, but come on. I know the devil's attacking your wife, but come on. I know that the finances are tight, but come on, come on Israel. That's it, that's it, that's it. The expectation of the wicked is going to perish. Get up Israel, get up Israel, get up people of God, get up preacher, get up missionary. Missionary, get up, get up. Go ahead, go ahead. Speak the word of faith. Speak the word of faith. Now they're getting ready to sing. I want these men. I want these men to take this anointing. And I want you to go out into this audience right now. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to pray for you. And the anointing that is on these ministries is going to be transferred onto you right now. As they sing. Somebody get your hands in the air. Somebody get your hands in the air. In the name of Jesus. Let me praise 
Praise him. Praise him. Praise him, Jesus. Praise him. 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 I'm going to praise